Good morning, Girl Point. Will you please stand to your feet? We are so grateful to have each of you here with us today. Today we get to celebrate the new life that Jesus Christ has brought to so many of our, our people in our church, but to our lives as well, that he um, has literally given us new life. And so from that point of place, from that moment of gratitude, we are going to, out of the gate this morning, we're going to give him praise because he is worthy of all of our praise, all of our honor in this place. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, let's press in together this morning. Great. 
testimony. Look where I'm standing now. I stand on the chain break, miracle make, powerful name of Jesus on the Jesus, 
you to go ahead and grab your communion elements this morning and if you by chance came through and did not receive that on the way in our hosts are coming down the aisle and flag them down and they will get those to you if you're a guest with us please know that we we invite you to receive communion with us um, it's what I see represented at the Last Supper when Jesus led this, the, the disciples through this meal, and so please feel free to join. Go ahead and start working your way through those layers. It's a wonderful melody when everybody does it in unison, the, the, the sound of cellophane. The first layer is gonna get you to the wafer, and then the second one's gonna get you to the juice. In Colossians, it's a letter that was written by Paul very young church and he's writing these words of encouragement about this new life they have in Christ in Colossians 3 I want to read a section out of here it says since you have been raised to new life with Christ set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand think about the things of heaven not the things of earth for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. And then jumping down a little bit more, it says this, Christ is all that matters. He lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Can I get an amen on that one? Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. And he concludes, or I'm going to conclude with this verse. It says, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives what you are holding in your hand is something that is that we can use to keep the message of Jesus rich in our life the bread represents Jesus body his body was broken his body not only the, the physical, but every layer of punishment and ridicule and slander, that's all represented in that bread. The significance of what Jesus went through physically fulfills something really important for us or unlocked something very significant for us. In the Old Testament, out of Isaiah, it says this, by his stripes, we are healed. In other words, we are made whole. 
So because he was broken, we can live in wholeness. That, I want that truth living richly in me. And then secondly, the juice represents his blood that was poured out. There's plenty of verses that, that highlight this truth, but perhaps my favorite is that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far his blood has removed our sin from us. I want those messages living in my heart. And so I love that Jesus takes a common meal with common elements, wine and bread, to bring deep meaning so that the message of the meal lives richly in our heart. And whatever is living in our heart, that's what the overflow of our life will be. That means we get to live in wholeness and being healed, and we get to live our life forgiven. I don't know about y'all, but this is a very meaningful meal that shapes my life. So with that, I want to pray over us, and we're going to go back into this song to, to just thank him and express our gratitude to him for all that he has done for us. So Heavenly Father, as we are standing here this morning and we're holding the juice and we're holding the bread, we thank you for everything that has been delivered to us through Jesus. And so Father, I pray that today we might have received communion in the past and, and been kind of half-hearted with it, but today we, in the very real sense that we are going to partake and take these elements in, we want to take in your healing and your wholeness. We want to take in your forgiveness and then live out of that truth. And so, Father, we are full of gratitude for what these elements represent. And I pray that we would continue to allow the message of Jesus to dwell richly in our life. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and receive these elements and we're going to continue with gratitude.
express our gratitude to him this morning. I'm going to invite you to remain standing. I should have said this from the very beginning, that we, we have a full morning together, not only with communion, but we also have uh, eight who are going to be water baptized. Isn't that amazing? I want to explain, in, in short, the significance of water baptism. We are going to witness the message of communion in the form of baptism. It, they're very complementary because in the same way that, the, that communion is about death that leads to new life, water baptism is that same message. And so those who are being water baptized, this is what has happened in their heart. They have acknowledged that they are a sinner in need of a savior and they invited Jesus into their heart out of obedience, out of um, following what the word says. What's next after you invite Jesus into your heart, Jesus would say, and he even modeled this for us, to be water baptized. Water baptism is the gospel preached without words. I love that. So every individual that comes up to this tank, they're going to sit down and they are going to go under the water. And that symbolizes dying to self. And their old life remains in the tank. And then as they are raised up, that is symbolic of the new life they have in Jesus. That's good stuff. And um, baptism, water baptism is a choice of the one being baptized. Um, that's really important. And so you're going to see us invite individuals. They're going to come into the tank. We're going to pray over them and be baptized. I want to lay out some expectations just so we're all on the same page. I know we have, we have guests, but it's, I just want to ex explain and express how Grow Point as a family that we do baptisms. It is something celebrate worthy. In other words, it's okay on a day like today to get rowdy in church. All right? I can even see y'all reluctantly clapping up in the balcony, all right? So I, I see you, all right? But here's what we're going to do. When, you, when each individual comes up out of the water, that is your cue to just go crazy and, and celebrate, to shout, to clap, and, um, and celebrate with them. Also, as, as you see individuals being prayed over, please like walk down this lane of you can worship, you can keep singing the, the lyrics that are up on the screen, but if you take a moment and you also pray, just pray that they are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray that they um, walk in the, the new identity of Christ alive in their heart. However you would feel led to pray, um, kind of walk that that. Um, multitasking kind of lane today where you're worshiping, you're praying, and you're celebrating. That's, that's my expectation in our gathering today. And so we've got a lot of baptisms, and so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to pray. They're going to get organized, and then um, we're going to have a party. Y'all ready? Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the work in the lives of those who are being baptized, we pray that today would be forever marked in their mind where they publicly acknowledge and publicly said, I belong to Jesus. My life, my heart belongs to him. And so, Father, I pray that, um, that they would just be marked by today in a very powerful way. We thank you and we celebrate with them the work of Jesus in their life. And so, Father, these next few moments, Really, the whole aim is to make a really big deal out of Jesus. This is all because of him. This is all through him. And um, we want to give him, we want to give the Father glory. And so help us to celebrate well, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything changed. It's getting harder to 
Justify 
changed It's getting harder to recognize The person I was Before I encountered Christ I don't walk like I used to I don't talk like I used to I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside
die to the old and come up. We have new, we're new creation, new life. We are literally walking miracles because of the work that he has done in our life. He is worthy to receive glory in this place. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Well, at this time, can you please grab your seat? We're going to stay in a moment of worship here. But we're going to transition. And if you are a grow kid, you are also allowed to go to the back here. You could get to go to your service. Um, so grow kids, you can go ahead and be dismissed. And at this time, if you are serving on our um, disaster relief team, will you please come up on the stage with me? We want to give a big thank you, Grow Point, for the spontaneity of us coming to you on Thursday. It is now Sunday, and looking at what you guys have given and what the community's given um, is such a beautiful thing to see. Thank you for participating. Thank you for sacrificing of your own finances and time and all the different layers. We want to say thank you for responding. Um, we basically, I'm born and raised in North Carolina. North Carolina mountains are second home to me. And as I've watched this week, I've been saying, God, what is it you want us to do? Because we're not just going to, we're not just haphazardly responding, but we want to, we want to be obedient to where you're leading us and guiding us. And so Tuesday night, I saw my friend Nakisha. She's a pastor in Kings Mountain, is at the foothills, um, basically of the mountains in North Carolina. And she, they're responding. Their church has been affected. Their community has been greatly affected. But they are also responding because they're so close um, to where the like catastrophic pieces took place that they're responding and they're pouring out. And she's like, I just need help. I need, I need people. I need supplies. Their biggest thing really, like we need formula. We need bottles. We need like all the different things. And so she was, it was just a cry for help. And I knew the moment I saw that cry, I'm like, this is our spot to engage. So thank you for engaging because this Tuesday morning, this amazing team here is going to be heading out around 4, 4.30 on Tuesday morning, and they're going to be going to Kings City Church, Kings Mountain, North Carolina, and they are going to get to literally daily respond. One of the days they're going to be going up into Hendersonville, um, which is one of the really hardest affected areas. They're going to get to go to another sister church um, where they're serving and feeding the FBI and the, and the cops and the different um, people that are just on site. We're going to get to go and help their church take a breather and get to do that serving for them that day and feed these people. Um, King City Church also has a lot of um, just trees down and issues around their own building that we're going to get to help be a part of. We're going to get to help serve and feed their community. So every single day that they're on, on the ground, sun up to sundown, they are literally going to be on the go. And so first of all, we're going to pray. We're going to pray over this team as they go. And then second of all, we're going to pray for this area that literally whole towns are gone. Like it's not even a matter of restoring like whole Whole cities are, are absolutely washed away. And so we know where our source of hope comes from. And that is him. We are not hopeless. There is nothing that is impossible with our God. There is nothing that is he cannot do. And so we're going to intercede on behalf of those who are hitting some very dark hours because we know in the darkest night where the light comes from and praying for God's provision. And so um, if you'll reach out your hand, please, we're going to pray here and then we're going to pray for those that are being impacted by this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this team. I thank you for their willingness to just say yes at a very last minute and rerouting their days and their plans and the sacrifices that are there. Lord, I thank you that you have called each one of them for such a time as this and that you are going to give them every resource that they need for this week. Lord, I pray for protection over them as they travel, as they go into nooks and crannies. And Lord, I pray for protection over them physically, but I pray also for protection over them spiritually, emotionally, over the things they may see, over the brokenness that they're going to encounter. Lord, I pray never once did they lose sight that you were the source of hope and they get to bring your hope they get to bring your love and your truth to those who have been facing such tragic moments and experiences Lord I pray that you would give them words to speak words of life words of hope that you would give them prophetic words Lord that you would allow them to see what you see hear what you hear and Lord, I pray for supernatural strength, a strength that is not of their own. Lord, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength as they go this week. Lord, that they would be your vessels 
of healing and hope and restoration. And Lord, we pray now over every single person that has been impacted by this storm. Lord, we thank you that you are our hope. You are the one that we cling to. We thank you that, that in the midst where people have lost everything, Lord, that they can fix their eyes on you and know that you are going to provide, that you are their, their, their source of everything. Lord, I pray that people would surrender their lives to you real time, that they would turn and surrender to you, that they would acknowledge who you are, that you are Savior, and that not only do you save them here on the physical side, but for eternity. Lord, that there would be salvation, that there would be revival, that there would be miraculous stories of just when I had my last source of food, someone showed up, brought the message of Christ, Christ, the bread of life, and also brought me bread. Lord, we thank you that we are going to hear miracle upon miracles of the way that you are moving, the way that you're you're rescuing, Lord, that you are real time, even people that have yet to be discovered, that you are bringing um, rescuers to rescue them right now in the name of Jesus. We declare your hope, your light, where there has been vast darkness, Lord, may you shine bright in that darkness, God. May you be glorified. May you be honored. Um, Lord, we thank you that you are the God who is with, and right now, now, real time, you are with every single person who is walking through this devastation, that your presence is real, that your, your nearness is real to them. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We have a really fast message that we're going to get to this morning. Um, has today been good, y'all? I love, I love communion. I love water baptisms. It's just, it just fills the heart. Um, if you are a guest with us this morning, this is not a typical morning, but I'm glad that you uh, have landed here. I want to take a quick moment and just acknowledge one thing called a grow card. We're going to actually get to it in like maybe 20 minutes, but a grow card is um, one, you can let us know who you are, but then also at the end of the message, we're going to have a little bit of processing after, after we go through these verses together. Um, if you are a guest, this coming week, um, you're going to receive some follow-up via email and check your inbox. We, we can only do that, though, if you provide us the information, okay? So that'd be really spooky if you just came here, didn't give us information, and then you still got an email from us. But um, one of the ways that we are intentional about your uh, time with us this morning is there are local ministries that we support, and you get to choose in that email which one that we give additional support to. And so please check your inboxes and, and look out for that email. And we, we just want to say thank you for being with us today. It's a fun morning to, to be at Grow Point. We have been on a series for a while. Um, Sam, can I task you? you? I know you can hear me. Can you unplug our um, tank? I just feel like it's my stomach, but really it's just the pump behind me. And so um, we want to hit the kill switch on that. But um, we've been on this series through First John, and John at this point in his life is at grandfather stage, and he is um, writing a letter to the church, and his main point of, of um, what he's confronting is this notion that they, they acknowledge, there's a people group that acknowledge that Jesus was God, but they had a hard time with the fact that he was fully human as well. And, and so they would go out and preach this message of like Jesus being God, but leave out the part of him being human. And that may not seem like a big deal, but it's actually the epicenter of the message of the gospel, that, that God so loved the world that he gave his son and he came as one of us. His work wouldn't be thorough if it was only partly, if he was just God. But he came fully God, fully man. So that the work that needed to be done for us and in us was thoroughly accomplished. And so John is, is setting things straight. So you may think, well, that's not a pervasive issue in our day to day. But it's a little bit more subtle than that. There are all kinds of attacks on the truth of who Jesus is. Um, there are all kinds of messages out there that, that question who Jesus is. And, and really the intent is to cause skepticism, to bring your mind to a place of like, can I really trust and believe this message about Jesus? And, and the ultimate goal of 
the, the opposition, and we have all kinds of names for it, the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of deception, um, the, we could just bring it down to Satan. The goal is to cause a detachment from humanity um, being detached from, from God. And so it may not be like this outright message of like, no, Jesus was only God. Um, there are all kinds of twisted stories and narratives that are out there about who Jesus is. John brings us back to the full story of Jesus. And so we have this, this section here. It's towards the end of 1 John. It's in chapter 4. If you want to grab a Bible, you can turn there in your phone. But 1 John chapter 4, we're going to go through six verses in about 15 minutes. So y'all, are you all ready? We've done a lot of praying, a lot of celebrating, and so I'm trusting that our heart is oriented in a way that we are hearing from him. And so let's get after this this morning. He, re- he writes this, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. They're, they're kind of sneaky, by the way. Jesus would call them individuals who are wolves in sheep's clothing. And so at face value, what they convey might sound soft and inviting, but underneath, it's a devouring message. And so that is the intent of any false prophet or any false messenger. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Does that sound so basic? So if the messenger, if the prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. I thought it was really interesting that that, that same kind of language is used as for the kingdom of God. That right now, real time, we get to experience glimpses of the kingdom of heaven. So we, we live in that reality now, but the fullness of the kingdom of heaven is not yet. Because we're not in heaven, right? I've said that before. Like, it would be a pretty le- big letdown if, if what we're living in right now were heaven. I'm pretty sure some of y'all would take up issue with that. Like, God, we have some talking of, we have some conversations, right? We need to have some conversations. So... The same is said of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is now, but it's also not fully yet. So I thought that was really interesting. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. It's the kind of message that's like, like butters their biscuits, and like, mm, I, wanna, I wanna eat that. That sounds like a good message. I wanna be all about what you're saying. And he, he concludes with the, these words, but we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us, and if they don't belong to God, they don't listen to us. It's, just, it's as simple as that. And this is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. And I deliberated on whether or not we should get into these verses because it seems like it would be moderately disconnected to our entire morning. But in reality, it has everything to do with our morning. For those that were just water baptized, this, this is a display of not only your heart belonging to Jesus, but it's also saying, I want the spirit of truth to, to remain in my heart you are living out the message that Jesus was fully man, fully God, and he came here and lived a very intentional life that ultimately led to being crucified on the cross. He didn't stay in the grave. He was raised, and that, that, that act right there, that happens in our life on a daily basis where we die to self and we continue letting the resurrection power of Jesus bring new life to us. Amen? Amen. That is baptism. And so we, throughout the course of our life, we have to pay attention 
to the messages that we allow to land in our mind and in our heart. And there will be some messages of who the person of Jesus is that sounds like 99% right, but there's that one percentage that makes it not right. And that's not to, to incite us to fear or, or like skepticism of everything that we listen to, but, but here's one, here's, here's a statement and a message that has been out there in, in recent years. And I think it shows up in a variety of ways that all religions lead to God. I, I guess if, you, if your way of thinking is that all other religions lead to a dead end road and the only way that actually does exist is Jesus, then I, I guess if you see it from that way, but no, if someone believes in some other um, God and they pass away, they aren't going to meet the Father. And, and that's, there are some that have a hard time with that. I'm actually full of gratitude that God made it easy. Jesus made it easy. Only he, in all of the realm of things that could be believed in, only he is the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the, the living water. All of these different um, I am statements. Jesus says that. And he goes, I am the only way to the Father. I remember early on in ministry, this is like probably the pinnacle of Oprah's career. And, and she would have on all of these like preachers and teachers and people like, oh man, did you see this, pa this pastor's on her show? And, and, and must, she must affirm their message. But then her conviction is always lead to God. And I was just like, y'all, that's not accurate. And I remember there was like this time where I was so passionate to like speak against Oprah. And you know what, she never wrote me. She never invited me on her show, which is quite okay. But she's not the only voice throughout our lifetime. There, there are all kinds of sly and sneaky messages of like, it's that whole thing of like, do what feels good, do what you, do what, do what you want, and you know, all in all, we're all gonna end up in the same place. It's not accurate. If that were the case, then why would Jesus come? always don't lead to the Father. Forgiveness only happens through Jesus because Jesus is the only one who has sacrificed. He is the only one that went to the cross who was perfectly pure, and he did that for us. And so when we put our faith in Jesus, we accept and we receive the forgiveness that comes through him, and we have new life. And so my encouragement always for somebody who's starting off in their relationship with Jesus is just keep things really narrow. Keep it really narrow. Like stay in the word. And if there's a question that you have in the word, ask questions of those that you trust. And be cautious throughout your life to not just let anything in. Here's what we have to do. This is why it's so important to know the word. Because as we study, particularly if you study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you learn the person of Jesus. And this is what you're gonna see. This is like my Sparks Notes version of Jesus. He came to bring freedom to humanity. We were in need of a savior. God's definition of freedom is restoring dignity to humanity. And if you walk down all that Jesus accomplished from forgiveness of sin, new life, new purpose, new identity, all of those things restore dignity to humanity. And when we receive that, there's something profound that takes place in our life. Why would we not want that message taking root into our heart? Any other version of the gospel, any other version of who Jesus is, is going to be a diminished expression of that freedom that God brings. And so we have to, like my encouragement all the time, get in the word, know Jesus through the word. Ask a bold question at the beginning of every day. Ask a bold prayer. God, help me see you today. 
Help me see Jesus today. Help me learn and understand Jesus today through my day. I don't know what, what kicked the, the, the idea in my mind, but even with Olivia, when we're praying at night, um, it's a real simple prayer, but it's like it's thanking him for his goodness. But, but we always end, we typically end by saying, God, help me see you tomorrow. And so as we learn him in the word and we learn him in our life, our life is shaped by what lives in our heart. We touched on this last week. And so John is saying there are a lot of messages out there about God, about Jesus, about what happens after we pass away. Pay attention to false teachers because if they don't speak the full message of, message of Jesus, you're going to get sidetracked so quick. And John's like pulling this young church back to the full truth of who Jesus is. And, and Jesus even warned his listeners. He, he warned his disciples. Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and read this out of, out of the Gospel of John. I love that John is consistent throughout his entire life of this message, but these are the words of Jesus to his disciples moments before being crucified. He says, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another, who is the, the Holy Spirit. We'll get there in a second. Th that advocate will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because the world isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later he will be in you. And in a few moments, Jesus would say, listen, I've got to go to the Father so that the Holy Spirit can be sent. Right now, you, can, you have the understanding that the Holy Spirit is around you. The Holy Spirit is with you. But in time, there's going to be this outpouring of the Spirit where the Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you to bring truth, not confusion. Real time right now, let me just make this practical for us. So this past week was kind of this twisty, turny, kind of heavy week because Summer and I, uh, she was born and raised in North Carolina. I lived there for 10 years and some change. And, and so the algorithm of all social media is just feeding us all of the updates about what's going on in Western North Carolina. And I felt this, this, this something happening in my heart throughout the week of this shift where joy seemed to be more difficult to find. Um, peace was wildly disrupted. And even though these are realities that are happening down in North Carolina, here's where it ultimately settled. It caused me to question God's sovereignty. And that's how the, the events of life, the, the disruptions of life, if we're not careful with the amount that we feed ourselves, it can disrupt the truth that we hold on to of who Jesus is. You are the one who never leaves or, nor forsakes. I was even praying these verses about how God levels the, the terrain. He brings the high places down and he brings the valleys up. Well, we don't expect them to look like what happened in, in Western North Carolina, right? So, like, there's all of these things that are happening that, that create and cause this uneasiness, and it strips and rips away peace, and ultimately, it brings me to this place where I question, God, are you really who you say you are? You are, I read in the Word that you are good, but man, this, this is really hard to, to get settled in my heart, and so I've started I just owned up to, to Summer, told, told Naya, told um, Gabby and Bailey. I, I found myself needing to be in the Word more because I felt my heart becoming uneasy about what I was, the, the information that I was letting in. Y'all, we just preached this this last Sunday about the, the, the cracks in the, the doorway, right? It's like, how, how slow am I? I just preached the message and it just happened to me this past week about how my insides were formed by information. 
all the more reason for us to hang on to the word, hang on to the truth of who Jesus is. You are, Jesus, you are the alpha and the omega. That means that you are the beginning and the end. Everything that happens in the middle, you're not thrown by it, you're not surprised by it, you're not like, oh, now what do I do? You're, that's, that, none of that is you. You are in control, you are the God who is near, you are all powerful, you are all capable, you are all knowing, you are love, you are joy, you are peace. And bringing my heart back to that place is so important because if I, if I continue to let my heart get unsettled, it plays out in very practical ways under the roof of my own home. In mine and Summer's relationship, I just start getting short and edgy and irritable, and, and I just have no patience for things, all because I'm uneasy in my heart because I've allowed some other message to take up in my heart. I want the spirit of truth to live in my heart where no matter the disruption, no matter the disturbance, no matter the chaos that we will witness, Jesus even promised us difficult days, but don't lose heart. He even said, don't lose heart, I've overcome the world. I need to be reminded of that. And so in your own day-to-day -day life, where are the areas that seem like it's chaos? It's, it's not chaos accidentally. Where has peace been stripped? Where, where do you find it hard to be joyful? Those are areas where a message has landed in your heart and it's stealing the life that God wants you to have. And it's not about the warm and fuzzies. It's, it's the fact that our God is so good that he, his desire is that we live in peace, that we live in confidence. And so John is reminding us, listen, there are all kinds of messages all around our day-to-day -day living. Keep coming back to the full truth of who Jesus is. And if you would, go ahead and grab your grow card because I believe that this is, if we can make this very practical this next week, The first service, I was like, you know, what's, what's a way that you can, um, something that you can do to feed on the truth of Jesus more this next week? And I know, like, I would typically be like, I'm going to read the Bible more, or I'm going to pray more, or I'm going to listen to worship music more. All of those are fine and wonderful. But this morning, I'm going to actually encourage you to write down a charge to yourself, to write down a, a, a statement to yourself one of the best ways for us to receive the truth of who Jesus is on a daily basis is to establish a pattern of waiting. I'm no prophet, okay? But I guarantee you that at least one person in this room is gonna have something unexpected with your week that happens. It could be as simple as somebody cutting you off in traffic that just kind of messes up your moment or it could be something a little bit heavier than that. You're gonna have disruptions. How, how amazing would it be though, if in the face of the disruption that happens, rather than allowing your heart to be shaken in that moment, what if you waited? It's hard to hear truth if we don't wait long enough to listen. And time and time again, there's this charge that God gives his people. I was thinking about Psalm 40, 46 today. It says, ultimately it comes to this place where it says, be still and know that I am God. We have a challenge as human beings. It's a challenge of being still long enough to allow the truth of who Jesus is to land in our heart. So if you have the grow card in hand, write down a statement to yourself. This week, I will wait on the Lord. Now, if that sounds too churchy for you, 
this is the way that that would practically play out. Let's just use somebody cutting you off. Rather than chasing them down. This is what you would simply do. Hey Jesus, you just saw that, right? I'm gonna wait here. I'm not gonna wait so long that somebody blows their horn behind me, but I'm just gonna, I wanna invite you into this moment of frustration. Or maybe it's a, an unexpected bill that comes this week. And rather than just blowing up, you're just gonna wait and be like, I, Jesus, I didn't see this coming, but I'm gonna wait and be reminded that you are the one who provides, that you have every one of my needs covered. And I'm just gonna wait in that truth. So grab the grow card and simply write yourself a note. This week, I'm gonna wait in moments that are disrupted. I'm gonna wait in the spontaneous disruptions in my life. And in that waiting, you're gonna allow time for the truth of who Jesus is to fill your heart. Even as we send you out this morning, I want to encourage you to find moments this week that you would normally squander, whether that be with news or the term doom scrolling, where you're just mindlessly scrolling. Use those moments to simply wait. And Pay attention to the uneasiness that you feel, but ask yourself the question, why am I uneasy waiting in his presence? I dare you to do that this week. I also, as you go ahead and stand to your feet this morning, I wanna invite you to do something practical today. After you've grabbed your donut and if, you're, if you have a child and grow kids after you uh, grab your kiddos, um, would, would you find either one of the boxes or the, the box truck and kind of go out of your way and just put a hand on it and, and say a quick prayer? Can y'all do that? Um, we're not videoing or anything to hold you accountable. I'm just giving you a practical charge, but we would love to have your prayers this week. And um, the very thing that we're talking about this morning, about the truth of who Jesus is, we're going to need that. Um, this team of 10, we're going to need that, and so we would covet your prayers. But um, let me pray, and then we're going to send you on out of here. Heavenly Father, this week, I pray that we would be a church family who deliberately waits on you. We want the truth of who Jesus is to live and remain in our heart so that we live out of that truth and not living out of the, the potential chaos that is around us. And so, Father, I pray that this would be a, a week that is full of peace and a week that is full of waiting in your presence. And so, Father, I anticipate that there are going to be many who are, who are surprised by your nearness, who are surprised by your peace. And so I thank you in advance for being with us this coming week. We love you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a peace-filled week. And um, we'll see you soon.